meninjau keindahan Kolhani Park, kami terus menuju ke Top Kapi Palace. Sewaktu berjalan kaki, kami melewati batu-batu binaan tinggalan bangunan lama. So, let's take your ticket. We have in advance ticket instead of waiting for a long time in the queue. <coughs> Berjalan menuju ke Istana Top Kapi. Ini ialah pintu masuk utama Istana Top Kapi. Dalam bahasa Turki disebut Top Kapi Sarai atau Istana Pintu Meriam. Istana ini adalah kediaman rasmi dan utama bagi Sultan Uthmaniyah selama 400 tahun. Kerajaan Uthmaniyah bagaimanapun berkuasa selama 600 tahun. Baiklah. Oh, Di sini terdapat dua lapisan pintu di dalam bangunan berasingan yang bersambung bumbungnya. Menariknya, istana ini mempunyai rahsia ciri keselamatannya yang tersendiri. When the water is running, people they could not able to hear what they are talking inside to make a sounds proof. That's why there's a fountain outside and you will see the throne of the Sultan and you will see the curtains of the throne with the diamond, jade, emerald stones. Let's go inside. You can take the... And the gate, this is the second gate. We call this the gate of Babu Salam. And the third gate is Babu Saadet. The gate of felicity, happiness, happiness gate. Okay, let's continue. Let's see the whole Pada musim bunga, istana ini indah dengan bunga-bungaan. Aziz memberi penerangan mengenai kehebatan Sultan Muhammad II. Baginda juga dikenali sebagai Nadi Sultan Muhammad Al-Fatih. Sultan, imagine, 14 years old. When he was 14, when he was 14 years old, he could able to speak four languages. When he was 19, he could able to speak all of the Balkanian languages. When he was 19, he became a Sultan. And when he was 21, age of 21, he took over the city. He conquered Constantinople. Yeah. And then, in this part of the land, Christian people, they used to live in here. But with the Sultan Mehmet II, he took over the city and Islam. Islam came in here, this part of the land. And Istanbul became a capital of the Ottoman Empire. Sultan, Sultan Mehmet II, and he decided to build a palace upon that hill because Istanbul established on seven high hills like Rome, San Francisco, Lisbon. This is the one of the hills of Istanbul. Because of the strategic position, he decided to build a palace upon that hill because the right side of the palace is Sea of Marmara, head of the palace is Bosphorus, and to the left is Golden Horn. That's why they live in this palace. 25 Ottoman Sultans lived in this palace. And every Ottoman Sultan added something. That's why you may see some buildings are coming from 15th century. Because 1453 they took over the city. And in 15th century they built this palace. But you may see some buildings inside from 18, 19, 17th century or 16th century. For example, the kitchen. There was a big fire in 16th century. Kitchen was totally burned down. But they rebuilt again. Ini ialah dapur istana yang dibina semula selepas kebakaran pada abad ke-16. Ketika itu, 4,000 orang menghuni istana ini. During the day, 4,000 people used to live in this palace. 4,000 people. 
and they cook for 4000 people every day through that chimneys through that kitchen kami kemudian singgah di kawasan pentadbiran three continents okay. this is the administrative buildings as well they were meeting they were doing conference meeting in this palace this is like a festival courtyard 10000 of people were gathering this courtyard they cook for 10000 people from the kitchens as you look at that to the right hand side all the chimneys that was the kitchen The Parliament Hall, three times in a week they were meeting in that Parliament Hall. On the way back we are going to see that Parliament Hall. In the third gate, we call this Babi Saadet as I told you. Only royalty, royal family could pass through this gate. Royalty. For the public they have to stay in this courtyard, in this side. And also, over there, there is a stone on the ground. This, this is the place where they put the sacred standards. What's that? The flag of Rasulullah, yeah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu yeah. alaihi wasallam flag, Sanja Sharif, yeah. Sanja Sharif. You will see that area. How comes the flag of Rasulullah was in Istanbul, in here? Because 1517, Ottoman Turks they took over Egypt, they conquered Egypt. When they took over the Egypt, they got the Caliph system. They were the leader of the Muslim people. They were not only the leader of the, this part of the land, they were the rulers of the Muslim people as well. Because Sultans became a caliph, the leader of the Muslim people. That's why they control the holy flags. Because of that reason, while they were celebrating their festivals, they, keep, they put this flag and the Sultan was sitting under the flag and they were doing a meeting with the flag of Rasulullah. Because Sultan, Khalifa used to live in this city, that's why they brought from all the holy items, holy belongings of Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam belongings. They took from Egypt to control under, uh, to protect under their control here in this palace. That's why we are going to see first that palace. Let's go. Keep your silence. Do not talk too much loudly because the person is reading a plan, you will see the holy items inside. So you are going to visit, you will go through the door and you will come out from this gate, okay? And no pictures. Sayangnya, pengunjung dilarang merakamkan gambar di dalam museum ini. Antara barang-barang yang kami lihat dalam museum ini adalah tongkat Nabi Musa, turban Nabi Daud, gigi janggut kesan tapak kaki dan pedang Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam dan juga pedang sahabat Nabi So Rasulullah swords of four caliphs khalifas Abu Bakr Umar Uthman and Ali sword you will see inside but not the Zulfikar dalam kawasan Istana Top Kapi sampai kami di kawasan Tebing Laut Menariknya Istana Top Kapi terletak menghadap Bosphorus yang bertemu Laut Marmara Istana ini dibina pada abad ke-15 semasa pemerintahan Sultan Mehmed II yang juga dikenali sebagai Fatih atau Penakluk Konstantinopel Sinilah Sultan-Sultan Uthmaniyah bersemayam selama beratus-ratus tahun. Istana Top Kapi terletak di kawasan yang menghimpunkan tempat-tempat tarikan yang mesti dikunjungi di Istanbul, termasuk Masjid Sultan Ahmed atau Masjid Biru dan Muzium Hagia Sophia yang terletak berdekatan antara satu sama lain. Ini adalah bangunan Muzium Hagia Sophia. Malangnya sewaktu kami melawat, muzium ini ditutup kepada orang ramai.
penjajah ini berjualan di kawasan pegangan Muzium Hagia Sophia, tidak jauh daripada Istana Top Kapi. Follow kami di episod ketiga Travel Duke di Masjid Biru atau Masjid Sultan Sulaiman yang tersohor. Jika anda suka, silalah subscribe channel ini.